Hi everyone, uh, my name is Anne Lee Steele. I'm the community manager for the Turing Way project. I'm based at the Alan Turing Institute, but definitely not exclusive to. Um, this video is to walk you through the Book Dash uh, application process and form um, with questions that you know come up when you're going through the form as it is a pretty hefty one, right? Um, I'm very happy to be joined here with Susanna, um, who will tell us a little bit about herself and then we will take you through the form. All right. So I'm here because I applied to the Book Dash last May, so it's been quite fresh. I applied with a team, the Data Hazards team. Um, and so I think as Anne goes through the form, if I have anything to add on or any questions, or if you, if Anne, you have any questions of how I applied, please, please just go for it. Ooh. We're going to try our best to keep this under 10 minutes. Um, we'll do our best, folks, but if you see that this video is over 10 minutes, then you know that we did not hit our timeline. Um, so first things first, um, we have here uh, shared my screen um, with the BookDash application form, um, and it's a pretty hefty form. And so hopefully as we walk through it, um, maybe Susanna, I'll um, maybe be your proxy and put in maybe the information that you would have for your project, really mimicking like what your ap application process was like. Um, and you'll notice that even though the book dash is taking place um, in November, we're starting through the application process now, um, meaning that folks have more than a month to, to really get their applications in, to really think through how they want to be um, involved with and engage with the event. Um, and our deadline is September 11th. Don't forget, um, get your app in now. Um, and this is just because we want to give ample time for our reviewers and our committee and team to be able to look through everyone's thoughtful applications. So to get started, um, just maybe the most basic question to ask is, who is this forum for? Um, on one hand, uh, we do like, uh, open it for really anyone to apply for, but um, it's really important for both the community and also the kind of space that we build at BookDash that um, that it is for folks who have previously engaged uh, with us as a community. That means, you know, it's, it's usually really helpful if you've gone to a, a collaboration cafe, um, if you've interacted with the project in any way, um, used it in your work, um, are really interested in getting involved. That doesn't mean that you can't necessarily apply if you haven't engaged with the community, but it usually helps to understand, you know, how we work as a community, what does it mean to, to write um, and edit um, the Turing way? What does it mean to maintain the project? Um, we also have tons of folks that, that come back who have been to Book Dashes previously, um, who usually come back in a contributor context where they want to add to an ongoing project, start a new project within the Turing way, or they might want to mentor other folks that are at the event. Um, and usually we have uh, folks that are uh, uh, facilitating other attendees or helping to review pull requests, um, chairing days and sessions, that sort of thing. Um, and you will note that while uh, while we did say on this form that the application may take 30 minutes to complete, how long, Susanna, did it take you to, to go through in total? I think, yeah, around the whole preparation, because we were a team uh, of, uh, it ended up being three of us, took around, I would say, five hours total. And would you change anything about that amount of time or like the discussion that you'd had in building your application? I think uh, I think five hours was felt quite efficient. I would say on top of what you've said so far that it really helped that N Natalie had already been involved with the book dash before. I had never done a book dash, but had been involved with the Turing way in some shape or form. So I had attended collab collaboration cafes that helped, like you said. So I would recommend to anyone who wants to attend this to go to also collaboration cafes. Uh, and uh, Kaylee was a bit less involved with the Turing way, uh, but had already been also in some shape or form. So that was, I think, made it quite efficient for us. It felt, it felt, it didn't feel like it took that long. I've done longer applications. 
<laughs> nice. Okay. Good to know. And I think that process, especially in applying with the team, and if you saw our other videos, Susanna talked about how like fruitful the process can be if you're also applying with other people. Um, that's also something to keep in mind that collaboration in any context and like thinking through what you want to do together also just takes time. Um, so plan, make sure to plan for that. To make it a little bit easier though, um, we do have this template document, which you can use, which I will click on to see if it can open as I share my screen, um, that has essentially a template of the form that you can feel free to, to fill out as well. Let me zoom out here, which you'll be able to easily duplicate and use to fill out for yourself or for the team that you might be applying with. And hopefully that helps as well. I'm gonna come back here to the application and zoom in. Okay, um, this note here is that if you're interested in hosting a hub, uh, meeting in like a geographic space and gathering people together um, from your space, uh, from your region, from your community, from your institution, uh, there's another form for that that is uh, due by the end of August. And maybe we can talk through another form maybe with some folks um, who have organized hubs in the past. So maybe a little bit about the book dash uh, format and background. Uh, as you we were saying before, it's a collaborative event where people work on various aspects of the Turing Way. And what you have in this giant kind of edit-to-thon is a series of contribution sessions um, of about two and a half hours each. That's not a like full time in which people are working nonstop for two and a half hours. Um, they use, they're, they're structured around um, Pomodoro working styles where pe people will be doing concentrated working styles and then take a break. Um, and people set up this kind of, uh, people sign up for different contribution sessions to really like fit the time that they might have around other commitments that they might have, um, whether that's uh, a working job or um, studies or a combination of the two um, or other uh, care responsibilities you might have Having these contribution sessions makes it easier for folks to book time out. Um, and you can learn more about that on our community handbook. So I just want to flag where we've been recording for around six minutes now. Yeah, I do have on my timer that it's that we have two and a half minutes left, which means that we are a hundred percent going to go over our timeline. Thank you, gentle watcher. <laughs> because we can try. We can go for 15 minutes. Okay. And if we go for that, then. Um, so maybe the most important thing here is, you know, along those lines of who should apply, uh, everyone has expertise to share. So we really encourage you at any career stage you might be at or like any discipline that you come from, um, you absolutely have something to, to share within the training turning away community, but also something that could absolutely be translated into documentation that others would learn from. Um, Susanna, maybe just as a prompt, what did you and your team write about um, during the book dash? So we had, we, we wanted to write about data hazards uh, because Kaylee and I had done a one day symposium uh, together with the Turing, Alan Turing as enrichment students. And we wanted to talk about our experience as well as talk about the data hazards project in the Turing Way book, because there is nothing about it yet. So we wanted to embed that because we think, and, and in fact, everyone agreed in the end that it did make sense to talk about um, potential dangers of data and how this can be used uh, and applied in PhD context or in a symposium context, how people can think about these kind of topics and give like a case study, which was the symposium and also our PhDs um, of how to use data hazards and write about it for, for the Turing Way booklet. So that's what we decided to brainstorm about. And this is also why it took eventually, I think maybe five hours is an over, overestimate, but definitely two hours for two separate meetings just to brainstorm what we wanted to talk about, then an extra couple or three more to get the text right. Yep. Nice. And how were those contribution sessions valuable for you in like being able to take time from your schedule otherwise? Uh, I mean, yeah, I think it was 
But, well, you mean like the actual application meetings or you mean like the actual book dash time? Uh, maybe the contributions and sessions during the book dash. Yeah, and then also I mean, they, those planning meetings, it, either or. I think they, they were really good for us to like set a time for that. And we are actually going to apply again for the one in November because we didn't have enough time to finish everything in that time frame of the book dash, which I have also come to talk with other people that it tends to be the case. If you have quite a lengthy topic to talk about in one book dash, you might not finish what you wanted to, to do. And we still try to make it achievable, um, you know, following the smart mm, mm, uh, right. bullet points. Um, but still, we're going to apply again for November. So I think it just goes back to what I said in the previous video, which is to be patient with these kind of things. They might, you know, you might think, oh, this is going to take me X amount of time and it takes you double that. Mm. So, yeah. And that's such a good point too, about how a project that you might start in one book dash may actually be one that continues across future ones. Um, because what the book dash is at its core is a space where you're, you know, accountable for time, where you have that time carved out. Um, where you're sharing that time in that space with other people to, to remain accountable to whatever you wanted to achieve that week. And that could mean, you know, joining one, two, three, four, multiple book dashes in order to um, achieve what you would like to um, over the course of that time. And I'd say the one thing to flag though as well is that writing chapters isn't the only project that you have to apply to book dash with. Um, folks have applied to BookDash with the desire to contribute to um, the translation and localization efforts that are happening within the project. Um, they've applied with the desire to um, document our accessibility practices that we have or don't have within our community or we're building towards. Um, people have proposed and also worked on various infrastructure maintenance um, questions and, and topics and libraries within the community as well. Folks are really proposing on working sort of on sort of all different aspects of the Turing way, whether that's writing chapters or another kind of project that all work to eventually you know, maintain and enable the book. Um, and here's a list here that might be helpful for you. And really, you know, the sky is the limit. Um, if you're interested in, you know, experimenting with a project, um, if you have an idea for something that you'd like to, to work on with the Turing Way, um, this is the place to work on that. Um, because Susanna, as you'd said also in your video, there was someone that hadn't, um, maybe in the other video that we did, uh, that there was someone that you met during the book dash that hadn't applied with you as a team, but then joined you in writing um, your new chapter and joined the team for that event. Yeah, that was, that was really, that was one, one of the highlights of people applying from different, coming from different places and then coming together. That was good, good stuff. Nice. Um, okay, so on to the next bit. Uh, just another flag, usually best and easier and you know, a way of engaging with the community is to get to know us beforehand. Um, and that usually means joining us in a community call, joining a fireside chat, um, joining one of our community spaces, whether that's on Slack or on any social media profile like Mastodon or Twitter, um, get started with reviewing the, the project on GitHub, getting to know um, the book itself. Um, but also you can reach out to me as community manager if you have any questions about um, any parts of the project or if you just feel stuck. A little bit about the time commitment. Um, essentially, you're expected to attend one co-working session uh, per day. Um, this is really, really uh, dependent on your environment, your situation. There's no obligation to attend the entire work week or the entire day. It's really what your schedule allows for and whether that's your availability or, or your time zone. Um, we do try to have sessions that work for both, for example, like Eastern time zones in the Americas, as well as uh, time zones in farther east and in uh, Pacific time zones as well. Um, and I think maybe Susanna, was there, like how many sessions over the course of the week did you find yourself attending during the week or per day? 
We attended minimum one and we tried to attend twice. And sometimes we found ourselves going, being in the flow of time by ourselves. So we kind of drifted away from the main Turing Way book dash timeline and working by ourselves and whatever we felt was important that day. So having that flexibility was also good for us. Nice. Oh, that's good to hear. Um, cool. And we also want to make sure that that space is there this November. Um, yeah, just another flag. Join us at a Cloud Cafe. Feel free to email us at turingway at turing.ac.uk if, if you have any questions. Um, and we will make sure that there's space uh, for folks that have any questions about the process. A um, couple things about logistics here. Uh, you are able to claim um, reimbursement to support your participation uh, in the book dash. And we have some documentation here from our community handbook. Um, and there are a couple of sessions here. So this session one, session two, three, and four. And um, throughout the week are what we call our social sessions, meaning that they're, you know, uh, they're proposed, they're not solidified, but these would be places where folks would be able to uh, meet each other. It might be a talk, it might be a workshop, it might be um, uh, a lunch share out or a show and tell, um, a casual chat, all sorts of things just for folks to get to know each other really across the different time zones and geographies that they might be joining from. Um, we had a really lovely uh, um, show and tell at this previous um, book dash, which is always a kind of tradition within the community. Um, maybe Susanna, did you join any? uh social sessions over the course of I the did. last book dash yeah um i did we i joined one of the show and tell actually but to be honest we actually when we were signing up to the uh, book dash we signed up for the times and then we didn't realize that some of the times we had signed up for were the social times so we thought we'd be working, but instead we <laughs> were booked for social time, which wasn't the worst, but it did mean once again, you needed to kind of be flexible with your time that week. Um, it was it was fun, though. It was a lot of fun to share in here uh, on a more chill, although everything was chill about the book, just to be honest. Um, but yeah, like get more personal with people. It's always, I mean, I enjoyed it. Nice. And it's good. Definitely something for us to flag to make sure that people are accidentally signing up to social times when they are thinking that they're doing work times. And something to keep in mind here is that you can also, we, we support people um, financially with any help that they might need accessibility wise or connectivity wise, um, and also can support folks for uh, a meal or a treat over the course of the week um, from the team. Da, 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 a little bit here about timelines, um, key deadlines and things like that. We will have a open Q&A on the 6th of September for anyone that's looking to apply to Book Dash, uh, ask any questions, ask questions that you might have. Um, and we also will have our deadline on the 11th of September which is midnight anywhere on earth. And the application review process will happen in the rest of September and folks will hear back about their application um, by the latest on the 1st of October. We'll have a series of onboarding calls um, in the last week of October and then a uh, GitHub workshop, which for folks who haven't used GitHub before um, is a place where people can learn those skills, learn how to get involved, um, to use GitHub for the first time, make their account, um, learn how to make their first pull request or issue. And this is important because the Turing Way project is itself hosted on GitHub, meaning um, edits to the book are made directly on uh, this repository. And uh, the GitHub workshops are always an important place to learn those skills. And they're also fun. And um, nothing more powerful than seeing someone make their first pull request. And then we have uh, the book dash happening the 13th through the 16th. And then the last day of book dash. So after four days of working sessions, we'll have a share out on, on the 17th, which is that Friday, last day of the working week, um, where people can share a bit more about what they've been up to over the course of that week. And I'd say, uh, 
Um, Susanna had mentioned the importance of attending some of the, the question periods, like the Q&A or um, uh, joining a orientation call, um, how helpful, or the GitHub workshop. We are now fully at 20 minutes, according to my timer. Um, how helpful for, for you were those calls, either in preparation or training? I did not attend any of them, even though I said they are helpful because I had already attended, because I had already mm -hmm. been involved with the Turing Way for such a, yeah, like I think six or seven months or something like that. I had already done another version of this mm -hmm. in the past. And in the past, they were super helpful. So I know they are helpful. Um, so I would still very much tell people to go at some point, whether it's, uh, you know, six months before or, or one week before the book dash. I don't know. No, this is like a month before. Really? Um, they tend to be really helpful. Did anyone from your team join these calls that you know of? I think Kaylee joined some of them, but no, I can't, I can't remember. I, I think we actually did join the pre-book dash onboarding calls because that was very much about the actual onboarding. So we did attend that, but the GitHub skill up and I mean, we've been attending collaboration cafes regularly also. So I guess, yeah. Yeah, and maybe it's just, again, a kind of flag, attend a collaboration cafe. Um, they're a place where you learn a lot of these skills kind of implicitly and also just a place to, I think, like learn a lot of the, the things that you might otherwise kind of get a condensed version of in one of the orientation and training calls. Um, okay. All right. Um, okay, so Susanna, I'm your scribe. Uh, what's your email, what should I put in here? Um. Oh, do you actually need to put my? I don't think I want to see. Yeah, I don't think I. Just as an example, of, sorry, gentle watcher. Um, we'll put. <laughs> you're just a, your first name, first name basis with a Turing email. Um, I'll put your name here. Um, email name. We have a GDPR compliance statement just shows how we use your data, um, how we make sure that your privacy is protected. Um, make sure that you read through the statement before you click, I understand and I accept. So Susanna, have you attended the Book Dash before? Would this be for your upcoming November one? The answer to this question would be yes. Yes. Cool. I wonder what other would be that you've been involved with the Turing, but you haven't attended or what would? I think that's a great question. I think for this one, it would be like, maybe I've attended uh, a session or I was invited to a session. Maybe I presented at a session, which is quite mm. different from being an attendee, something along those lines. Good question. Um, so this is for folks who perhaps have attended a book dash previously, um, is a question of whether or not you'd want to join the planning committee. The planning committee are the folks who think through like strategy and implementation and kind of think through like what makes the book dash the book dash and how do we make sure that it's an inclusive, a fun, um, a productive week for anyone that might want to get involved. Um, we really encourage people to apply. Um, at the time of us recording this video, which is the 27th of July, applications are still open. So apply for the Book Dash Committee, Book Dash Planning Committee, uh, the Book Dash Working Group, um, which is due by the 31st of July, which is a separate form that we will not talk through or walk through. But on Susanna's behalf, I'm going to click yes here. <laughs> We'd love to get more folks um, to get involved in the committee to ensure that you know we keep growing as an event. Um, and maybe not that we keep growing, but rather that we make sure that we're open and inclusive and fun. Um, so this next question is whether or not you wanna host a local hub. 
So we didn't really talk about this uh, in detail at the beginning of the forum, um, but something that's kind of happened over the course of the history of the Book Bash is that we went through a series of kind of in-person events um, when they started in 2019 that went uh, 2019, 2018, that became online events starting in 2020 with the COVID-19 lockdowns. And now starting in 2022 and then now into 2023, we've really tried to experiment with what a hybrid um, book dash might look like that allows people to meet in real time in whatever geographic space that they are in and place that they're from um, or based in, um, but also kind of get all of the advantages of being in a global digital um, first event and a remote first event. And uh, we've experimented with a couple different versions of what, of what a hub might look like. Um, I was part of a hub in Bristol in the UK, as well as the hubs in London, um, as well as a totally remote hub that was kind of a global America's hub um, that hosted time zones for folks that are further west. Um, and it's a really great opportunity and a chance to, to think through these really thorny questions, right, of how do we kind of create spaces that are both online and in person. And so if you are interested in hosting a local hub, the forums for those are due by the 31st of October, I mean, August. And if you have any questions about the process, please reach out. Um, really, it's a very experimental space and uh, we'd love to see your application there as well. And on your behalf, Susanna, I also clicked that you would be interested in attending a local book dash hub. I'll do everything. <laughs> Actually, should I should I just put you in as the host? <laughs> You're just hosting everything. Yeah, yeah, why not? <laughs> um, maybe, Susanna, do you have any reflections on what it meant to engage with the different hubs of this last Book Dash? Like there are some folks, we had a Book Dash hub in um, Amsterdam, well, in the Netherlands uh, that was focused on open hardware this time around. And then we had like more time zone hubs that were... Yeah in Asia Pacific as well as the Americas. Um, yeah, what was your impression of this? I think it was really good that this was happening. I would say it's nice to have um, people wanting to, especially with the time zone thing and with the, yeah, and with, with actual physical space, when you can't commit to coming to the touring in person, it's really nice to have people decide to host somewhere else. Um, and so I think it's great. It's a great thing that the Turing Way is allowing for people to do it. And I think if anyone would be interested in this, that the Turing Way team, again, like they are, you guys are so helpful. If anyone has any questions on how to do this, like it, even me, for me, I think. So I'm now not based in London anymore. I, and I have a confidence that if I wanted to do one where I am, I know that the team would be there for me to help me. So um, I would very much encourage to to try and test this out. Again, make sure, if you can, to have a team with you and not just do it by yourself. Um, but that's more of a personal advice that I would give myself. <laughs> No, totally. I mean, if the theme, if there's any theme that the book dash has in general, it's like, don't work alone. The solitude can be very important and very conducive. But that's very different from being alone and from doing things alone. Um, it's almost always better and um, more conducive and creative to work in tandem with other people. Um, so we're already into the next page of the forum. If our talking hasn't made the form seem more approachable and less intimidating, then I'm all out of here. We have failed. <laughs> we have failed. <laughs> Hopefully the markers make it easier for you to find the one part of the form that you want to get a question on. This will be done in post. Okay, so now we're in like, if it didn't seem like the rest of the form wasn't beefy enough, now we're in the part where you actually talk about like why you want to join the book dash and what brings you here. Um, essentially, the responses to, and that was us in 30 minutes. Let's do it. Um, 
these application questions, so the responses here in this part of the form, um, again, it's really just to emphasize that you don't have to have previously contributed to the project um, or be confident with GitHub, but it is helpful to think through these things kind of in advance. And that's really what this forum is, is meant to help you with. Um, yeah, and we're really curious with, especially in the time that we're in right now, how people would think through like data science or like gaps in, in our knowledge or in our documentation um, in 2023. So this first question, what could you contribute to the Turing Way during the Book Dash event? Um, what was this like, question for you, Susanna? Yeah, would you like me to go through this part then? And I yeah, can sure. kind of, yeah, so you still share the screen, but I'll kind of guide. Great. Sounds good. Uh, so, yeah, I guess. Again, because we did it as a team. So first we came to this question, what could you contribute to the Turing Way during the Book Dash event? And so what we did was um, we had a few bullet points at the beginning uh, in, our, in one of our first few meetings of the things that we wanted to talk about, which was data hazard frameworks. What is it? What have we done with it? And how can it help? uh improve or add how can it add to the to the Turing way book and so we had a brief description of what the framework is i'm looking here at uh, our our answer and how we integrate it in different ways and the kind of examples that we wanted to give. So we wanted to talk about how we've implemented it in our PhDs, more specifically my own PhD, and also in the symposium that we organized in March uh, around data hazards, ethics, and reproducibility. Mm. Uh, and again, try to keep it, try to keep it to 150 words, which is always a challenge. Um, in the next question, what would you gain from being part of the Turing Way book dash? Uh, we said, obviously, the opportunity to collaborate with others. I mean, this is really not surprising. 21, probably, I assume everyone is going to be uh, saying saying this because that's what the book dash is about. It's about collaborating with other people and getting a range of expertise. So this is this was really good in our case. You know, when we were applying, we wanted to collaborate with other people. And in fact, that is what ended up happening. We did get someone from outside who came and collaborated with us. Um, and another thing that we said was also something that we could benefit from was getting more uh, knowledgeable on how GitHub works. This I think this was also good, specifically for the for the PhD students involved. So for Kaylee, Irma, and I to do to work around pull requests and pushing issues and doing things like that was something that we would definitely and we did in fact gain from attending the book dash. So I guess that's more on the technical side. Um. And yeah, that, that was basically our response, uh, collaborating with others, learning how to use GitHub, and also learning how to uh, work with things like Netlify, Netlif how do you pronounce it? Net Net Netlify? Netlify. Netlify uh, was also really, really helpful. Um, the next question was, how would you like to collaborate with other participants or what support will you invite from them during the book dash event? So um, we wanted to get other people's perspectives um, on, on the data hazards framework because you know when you are involved with something for a long time, you kind of are so into it that you don't think about it as an outside from an outside perspective. Um, so we wanted to see how other people understood what we were writing about. So to get peer feedback uh, on what we had been writing about. We were also wanting to learn about people who had experience with accessibility 
uh, practices or like people who had done conference management and things like that, that they could potentially give us some feedback again on what our experience, on what we were writing about. Um, we also wanted to get proofreading. <laughs> we actually, we full on wrote this in the application. You know, it would be really nice to have proofreading of our content and make sure that it's clear and understandable and free of jargon. Um, and yeah, make sure that it's, it was truly what we were writing was understandable and accessible for everyone, not just for the people who are familiar with the data hazards um, framework. Um, what, so then that's that, those were our answers. Cool. Yeah. So I think with that, yes, okay, we got through. Nice. So last bit of the form is really focused just on your application, um, like your information as an applicant and demographic details that help us to be able to support folks um, from whatever environment or situation they come in from. Um, so about in the interest of non-disclosure, let's click other for both of them. Okay. And now we're in the next part of the form, which is around timings. Um, as we flagged, uh, we have two kind of pre onboarding calls on the 30th of October. And then we have um, our contribution sessions happening over the week of the 13th through the 16th. And then community share out, which happens on the 17th which is really just a place where they share what they've been working on throughout the week. Um, working sessions kind of go sort of across the gambit as we were saying of different time zones, um, really just trying to reach as many people as possible. And so this last part of the form is really just to gauge your interest or your schedule as you can possibly predict in advance um, to attend the onboarding session on the 30th. Um, and we have two options here, one in the morning at London time and one in the afternoon or evening London time, which you have the option to sign up for now um, or at a later date. It's helpful for us to know uh, timelines and times people might be available. We also have uh, this GitHub session, which you're able to sign up for at the time. This training session is also open for anyone um, to join from the community and more broadly, it's an open event. Um, but again, this helps us to, to know numbers if you're available during the time. And then this is where you might be able to share like roughly during the day or throughout the week what contribution, contribution sessions you might be able to attend, um, which whether that's the 8 to 10.30, 11 to 1.30, 2.30 to 5, or 5.30 to, to 8, uh, UK time. And this would, again, vary depending on your um, on your time zone. And we do at times have different contribution sessions either earlier or later on um, during the day, depending on uh, yeah time zone requirements. Um, Susanna, with this one, did you roughly pick one of the sections, like maybe the morning or the afternoon time, thinking that they would be working sessions, but they were actually? Yeah, so we ended up, so be, again, because we applied as a team, we had a meeting together and we said, okay, it is more likely that we're going to do the 11 until three, until 1.30 and the 2.30 until five on this day. So yeah, we tended to always do the same session. Mm. Um, and I think because you're signing up to the session for that you are most likely to, then these might, one of these sessions might be the social session right and so that is why we had the confusion that we thought we had signed up to do working hours but it turns out that the session we were doing was a social time mm -hmm. session i think yeah yeah that's so for people who are applying then maybe you know take into account i, I think really a tip is just to be flexible with your time if you can 
Uh, and if you can't, and if you signed up to something and then you realize that you don't have time for that, then I, in my experience was that everyone was quite chill as long as if you're working with a team, you gave notice, no problem. Nice. Okay. That makes a lot of sense and definitely something to flag for one future versions of this application, but also for anyone joining, just something to flag that if you're, especially you're, if you're signing up in the, maybe the first two sets of sessions, that will most definitely overlap with social session times. Um, and it's something to, that we can, we'll make clear through the scheduling process, but also um, just something to flag for your schedules as well. Da, da, da. And then this last question is around just sharing how you learned about the event. Um, this is really helpful for us as well in knowing how and where we communicate might be helpful for people and that is finally the end of the book dash application it's 10 minutes we wanted to do this in 10 minutes <laughs> yeah we did want to do this in 10 minutes but i think we're right around 40. well but this just follows what i've been doing you know what i've been saying just be patient yeah, with this kind of application and this kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. And if you have any questions, reach out. Thank you so much, Susanna, for all your help. Thank you. And we hope that you apply. And this video was actually helping you with the application process and not making it seem more intimidating. Um, yeah. And also, if you have any questions, feel free to find me around the internet and send me send me an email i can even maybe link my university email at the bottom of this or something like that uh, i'd be happy to help with this sounds good um thank you so much susanna and thank you to you for getting to the end of this video um hope it was valuable for you and see you at book dash november 2023